להדפיס עשרת אלפים. גם זה הלך את המאוד זול. Today is the 15th day of, uh, 15th, <laughs> 17th day of Cheshvan, the 18th of uh, November, ah, Yom HaMabul. Okay. It's the day that the rain started falling. Achayinyan, so we're in chapter 29, in Shorosh Mitzvah Sefil. This is where it gets interesting. It gets interesting because this is where the machlokis is, the uh, dispute. Achayinyan, דיני הגאון החסיד רבי יהודה ליוואי בר אבי בצלאל מפראג, רבו של התוספות יום טוב, בהקדמת ספרו גבורת השם, השיג על דברי הרמב״ם, ומה שכתוב הוא היודע והוא הדעה, והרבה להשיב עליהם. So he says the Maharal of Prague, who was the Rebbe of the Tosfos Yom Tov, Yom Tov Lipman, is one of the famous uh, commentaries on the Mishnah. It's interesting that he introduces him that way. I think that he introduces him that way is because the Schneerson family is a descendant of the Maharal through the, the Tosfot Yom Tov, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that's why. Because the Maharal was like the, was like the Rebbe of that generation. And uh, I think I once mentioned maybe that uh, most of the uh, commentaries that we have on Rashi come from his base Medrash. Really? I didn't know that. Most of them. Um, and he was the biggest uh, proponent of teaching Kabbalah, of, of moving into Kabbalah in, in uh, Eastern Europe at that time. He was in the 16th century. It was about a uh, hundred years before the Baal Shem Tov. And 80 years. And he lived a very long life. I think he passed away when he was 98. He's dying in like a thousand years. What? He's dying. Time. Yeah, it was like living a thousand years. Okay. And uh, he wrote many, many books. The interesting thing is that even though he was a great proponent of Kabbalah, he, and he knew a little bit already of the Ari of Rav Isaac Luria's language, he didn't use it at all. And his language is, t- is like the Ramak. It's an, it's, well, not even the Ramak. It's, it's even earlier than the Ramak. It's, uh, it's almost entirely philosophical. What's interesting, though, is that, again, that by the people that came before the, the Ari, so the language was different, but they mentioned Sfirot and so on. He doesn't mention Sfirot. He doesn't, although he hints to them in the titles of his books. So this book he called Gvurat Hashem, or Gvurot Hashem, as it's called today, the Might of Hashem. And there, in the introduction, he says, he, he disputes what the Rambam wrote, that God is the knower, He's the knowledge itself, He's the power of knowledge, and so on. And He gives a lot of reasons why this is not true. V'zele shono, and now he quotes for him, Re'e shehem omrim alam she'atzmuto sechel mufshat. He says, look at the philosophers, that they claim, specifically the Rambam, that Hashem is simple mind, simple sechel, simple intellect. What do you mean simple? Simple, we, we said, when you say something is simple versus complex, it doesn't mean how hard it is to understand, it means whether it's enclosed in something or not. So simple appetite is that I'm just hungry. Complex appetite would be when I'm hungry for something specific. So, Sechel Mufshat means that he's the power of mind. He's a power of intellect. V'chol Sechel shu yodea ha-davar b'nafsho k'mo shu chutz l'nafsho. And any type of knowledge that he knows, this is a different way of saying he's the knower, he's the known, he's, he's all that. Anything that he knows, it's, it's, it's not like it's outside of him. It's everything that he knows that by us is outside, we need to have intention to bring it into us. By him, it's already known inside. And and he says, and therefore you can't tell the difference between God and creation. He says, that's, that, that's the bottom line, because how do we know the difference? We know because we say that I exist, I have the power of knowledge, and then I come to know, I don't know, this, this uh, book. I begin to understand it, so I, I hold it in my mind. So who came first? I came first. That's ilav alul. I I am the cause. Let's call it. But it's not a cause. But I'm the I'm the power that gives sense to this book. And if I wasn't here, then this book would have no meaning. 
But he says, but if you make them the same, so there's no difference between God and creation. They're the same thing, because everything's inside of him. Basically what he's saying is, this is imminence, and he has a problem with it. It's like Spinoza. It sounds like Spinoza. And he's right, he's right. It sounds very much like Spinoza. <laughs> Except that the, the Rambam really puts it only in the mind. But he says, if he knows everything, like we, like we talked about last week, a tiny, tiny bit. Why, why, how does Hashem, what is Hashem's omniscience? What does it mean that he knows everything? So the sages use a language that the Alter Rebbe quotes in the Maimar on this. He says, they say, Galui ve'adua. It's revealed and known. What do you mean it's revealed and known? Meaning he doesn't have to reveal and know it. It's already revealed and known. What does that mean? It means that he and what he knows are one thing. There's no difference between them. And, and that in, indeed is a problem. Imminence, we have to say, again, I'll say, imminence means that God and the world are one thing. What's the source of this in the Torah? That was in last week's Parsha. And, and the end of Shishi, in the end of Shishi, it says that Ash- that Avram uh, uh, planted an orchard, Vaita Eshel in Beersheva, Vaikra Sham B'Shem Hashem Kel Olam, and he called there and he used to uh, uh, advertise the name of God the World. Except it doesn't say Kel Haolam, doesn't say God the World. It says God World, Kel Olam, and so. I don't know what Avraham meant, <laughs> but when we read this, what it means is that God and the world are one thing. That's the source of it, what we call imminence. But if you ask a Jew, just a Jew who's never learned very much, he doesn't know very much of anything, where is God? There's a question like this in the, in the Brachos, in the, in the tractate of Brachos, that, that, that uh, 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 Rabbi Yosef asked Abaye and Rava, where is Hashem? So what did they do? So they pointed up. And uh, one of them went out and pointed up. It doesn't matter, same, same idea. But the point is <laughs> that when you point up, you're saying Hashem is transcendent. Hashem is above reality. That's why everybody says Hashem is in the heavens. Hashem is above. He's not here. He's not in the... He, if He was here, then why would I worship Him? It's just it's like worshiping the, the, the sun and the moon. What's the difference? So imminence is is not easily understood in Yiddishkeit, even though, in Judaism, even though there's a, um, there's a, 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 a completely explicit verse that Avram called him God world. Avram wasn't afraid of this. He understood. You say God world. You have to understand that even the world is God. The God is at least the world. Let's say not even, but at least the world. He's much, much more than that. But he's at least everything that you see. So, says, says the Maharal, but if you say that he's just intellect, pure intellect, then there's no difference between him and the world. And there's, but it's not just that there's no difference, but that you can't say who came first. So he says, again, what they said, that he is the knower, he's the known, and he's the one who is the power of knowledge, all this leads to this conclusion that instead of um, him being the cause, the reason for everything existing, it becomes that he and everything that exists are the same thing. And he says, this is completely nullified. We can't accept this at all. And so, in the Maral's base Medrash, you should know that they never brought in the books of the Rambam. Neither the Mor and Nebuchim, for sure not. And even the Yad, because he says this even in the Yad. He says this in the, in the Halachic work. And he says, bottom line is, knowledge, intellect, these are all creations. You can't define Hashem using these creations. It's, it would be like saying God is the moon, God is the sun. It's on the same level. The, the sun is a creation, the moon is a creation, and intellect is a creation. God created intellect. Don't say that God is intellect. And by saying that he is one of these creations, the intellect, 
you are limiting him. You are defining him. And God is undefinable. לכך אין לומר שהוא יתברך מתאחד בדבר, לומר עליו שהוא דבר זה מיוחד. Therefore you can't specify that God is this and not that. Any time the, so going back to Kel Olam with imminence, the, the Maharal doesn't seem to have, a, he doesn't have really a problem with imminence. He has a problem with saying it's something specific within the imminence. And for him the intellect is something specific and he's, he's, he's right. Therefore, they are, they are unwise, those who say that God's very being is intellect. But really, you can't say anything specific about Him. So what do we use instead? When we have to pray to Him, we say He is simple being. Simple being. Being. Yeah, being. Says the Maharal. For us, He's just being. Lo yugdar bame. There's no definition what kind of being. Just that he is. So sometimes he's called mechuyava metziut. This is a language that they li- is very much liked in Hasidus. Mechuyava metziut. He is ne- his being is necessary. It's a necessity. It can't be otherwise. Meaning it's, it's essential to him. And this is not intellect. And we don't know what this being is nor what its essence is. So if somebody asks, so what is he? After all, Nashuv Lehem will tell him the answer. In the same way that you can't know what your soul is, like William James says in his famous uh, uh, book on psychology, Introduction to Psychology, I think this was, I don't remember what it's called, so something in psychology, very important book, everybody reads it at some point. He says the soul, the word soul is a placeholder for what the soul is, because we don't know what the soul is. Everybody agrees, we don't know what the soul is, we don't know what this life force is, we have no idea what it is. So if, if in yourself you can't define what you yourself are, so all the more so that you can't define what God is. And you can't ask this question, if I can't define it, maybe it doesn't exist. No, you can't define it, and it exists very well. Ki lo irani adam v'chai, because he cannot be seen. And what we mean by seen is not just with the senses, we mean even with the mind. V'chol advarim tuchal linbod mishvotav ktoshim, and anything you want to know about God, you shall learn from His holy names. Ki shem ha'etzem ba b'nishon avaya, because his essential name, the one we say is the most important name, Shema Miuchad, Shema, Shema, what else do we call it? Shem Ben the four letter name, Yud Kei Vav Kei, what does it mean? It means to be. It means all the different tenses of being put together, or it's constantly being. Because all he is is being. That's all we can say about him. But intellect, that is not simple being. That you can't say about Hashem, you can't define Him as that. And understand this well, he says, and this is the quote from the introduction to Gvurot Hashem. And we'll end here, and tomorrow we'll continue with Hashem.